Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Yeah. You're my friend. I want to hang out by you. All right. So there's this really smart person that we all know that never existed. And his name was Forrest Gump. Anybody heard of him? Yeah. And he said something really smart one day. He was sitting on a bench waiting for a bus and holding a box of chocolates. I think you all know what I'm about to say. He said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You guys remember that famous line, right? Yeah. So I'd like to challenge Forrest Gump, though, today and say life is like a boxing ring. Because you may not know what's around the next corner. You may not know what you're going to get. But you can have an influence on how the outcome is. What you're going to get depends on what you put into it and how you throw those punches in that ring. The moments that you choose wisely lead to good things, and the moments that you choose poorly do not, right? And so we have options. It's not just a box of chocolate that's unlabeled. There are some labels in this box of chocolates, and you get to choose. Each punch we throw either gets us one step closer to our goal, one step closer to winning the prize, to winning the golden gloves, or one step closer to the mat. It takes us one step closer to finding and realizing our goals, or one step closer to unhealth, disrest, unhappiness. The choices we make and the choice to get in that ring can lead to greater quality of life, greater quantity of life, and a beautiful legacy. And we all want to leave behind a legacy, yes? Good. Uh, so there are five boxing moves that I'd like to share with you that can improve your quality, quantity, and legacy. Are you guys ready? How many body combaters in the room? All right, every time I give one of these moves, you guys got to stand up and do it. Uh, maybe. I would love it if you did that. It would make me a happy mama. However, I will make you stand up in your cute little clothes. Um, so the first one is fighting stance. We know the fighting stance, right? This is the feet are separated about hip width apart, one in front, one in back, our guard is up, we're soft in the knees, we're ready to go. What is the fighting stance? It's our powerful core. When we're here, we can duck and move, we can throw a hard punch, and we can be successful in the ring. But if we stand with our feet together and stiff, the first little wind that blows, we fall over. And so we want to use our fighting stance. When you go to start a healthy journey, the fighting stance is the first and most important part, and that is setting goals. Your fighting stance is setting goals. There are five parts to setting goals, and any of you who've ever done coaching with us before know these five things. It's the SMART goals, yes? We've talked about them many times. It needs to be specific. What am I going to achieve? Specific, that's the S. What exactly am I after? Oh, do I want to lose 20 pounds? Do I want to get off cholesterol meds? Do I want to have more free time? Do I want to be able to keep up with my spouse? These are the things that are specific. The second one is M, measurable. It has to be measurable. If you can measure it, you can attain it. So let's say your goal is to get off of cholesterol medication. What is measurable? Well, the number right and so maybe your goal is to get under 200 so you start making a plan of action that will help you to achieve that uh, the a is attainable it needs to be attainable if you set a goal of being 20 again it's really not very attainable I mean, we can try but i don't think we can turn back the clock if you figure out how to do that please let me know that would be fantastic I'd like to keep my adult brain, but have my 20-year-old body. That would be great. Uh, from there, we go to the R in SMART, R. It needs to be realistic. So we need to set goals that are actually truly achievable. Not just attainable, but that really makes sense in our life. That's the difference between attainable and realistic. Do they make sense in your life? If your goal is to have the body you had at age 20, but you have five kids running around, two jobs, a spouse, and you're part of the committee at church, 
Are you really going to have the time that you need and the energy that you need to hit that goal? So it needs to be truly realistic. And then finally, T, time bound. It has to have an end point. Just like this competition had an end point, you have to have an end point. If you are aiming for something and you don't have an end in sight, what's going to happen? Anybody? What's going to happen? Anything? Failure. Failure. Who said that? Yes. <laughs> the chance of being successful without an end point is almost impossible. If I were to say, I'm going for a drive, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I'm going to end up, but whatever, I'm going for a drive, hopefully that means I end somewhere good. Chances of arriving at any specific destination are nil because there are what, approximately 20 billion different places you could land, right? So if you set a very specific time bound, so in six months, I will reduce my blood pressure to normal range. That is realistic. One, it's specific, it's, it's uh, measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic, and it's time bound. Those are the five things. So that is your fighting stance. When you have that powerful, strong stance, you will have such far greater chance at being successful. The second one is the jab. So you're in your fighting stance and you throw that first punch. The jab comes off the front arm. And any of you who have ever been in a boxing ring, or any of you who are like the rest of us and have played like we're in the boxing ring, right? Done the whole body combat thing and we pretend, that's a love tap. A jab is not a powerful hit. It's not gonna take somebody out. It's not gonna land them on the mat. It's a love tap. Hey, what do you think? I'm here to stay. Back up, dude. I'm coming. That's what a jab is. A jab is getting someone up against the ropes. A jab is testing out the grounds. A jab is figuring out what your next step is gonna be. Okay? So in our goals, as we're setting those SMART goals, the jab is getting out of your comfort zone. It's testing the water. On the other side of fear is success. And fear is what holds us back and keeps us from stepping in that ring and throwing that jab. But what that jab is, is stepping past the fear and testing it. It doesn't mean you have to dive in head first. It means you're looking for rocks down there, feeling the water before you dive in. Maybe your goal is to lose 50 pounds and that feels overwhelming and impossible. But maybe you start by going for a walk. Maybe you start by trading out one soda for water. You're testing the water. And you'll find out on the other side, all that fear that you had that was holding you back, it's really not so scary over there. And you can keep going. So that's what those jabs are. Testing the water, testing the water. The third is the cross punch. The cross punch comes from that fighting stance off the back arm. That is your fierce punch, right? The cross punch is where the power is. Anybody who's ever watched me in body combat will know the cross punch and the hook are my two favorite punches. <laughs> they are so powerful. When you come off that back side, you're doing two things. One, you're winding up. You've got some distance to travel to get some power behind it. Two, you're winding up the core. Think of your core as a spring. The tighter you make it, the harder it will suddenly release. And in a cross punch, you're winding and releasing. The cross punch is your powerhouse. This is your TKO. This is your take them on down to that mat and finish it. It is a powerful punch. And the one thing that can be done to take out your goals and finish with power is to be consistent. Remember, C for cross means consistent. Your power punch is not in how much you do. It's not on how much you take on. It's how often you complete the task at hand. It's showing up for that workout when you don't feel like it. It's making that healthy meal at eight o'clock at night when you'd rather just run through a drive through That is the consistency. That's the cross punch. That's what takes you across the finish line. That's what drops your opponent on the mat. The fourth one is the block. Now, I took some martial arts courses with a, a master and he was amazing. He taught me how to do a spin kick. I'm not gonna do it in this dress and these heels, but a spin kick and land it every time. That is really freaking hard. 
One of the things he made me do, though, is block, 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 block. I was bruised from him coming in and me knocking and de de uh, deflecting and deflecting and deflecting. He would not, I'm like, just teach me the spin kick. He's like, not until you learn to block. And so I had to block and I had to block and I had to block. Blocking in the case of reaching your goals is deflecting all the haters and negativity. They will be out there. You've all experienced them. They're that person that seems to want to push you down and hold you down and keep you there. The problem with them is not that they don't love you, because more than likely the person that was your hater is someone very close to you. It's not that they hate you. It's not that they don't love you. It's not that they want to see you fail. It's that they're terrified of your success because it makes them a bigger failure. It has nothing to do with you. So the best thing that you can do is block and deflate. So let me give you a, an example. You're on no sugar. This is gonna ring true for myself the last six weeks and for many of you who took on the challenge with me. No sugar for six weeks, yes? So what's the first thing that happened? You want this cupcake? How about I pour you a soda? You need a beer with that. And so they're pushing you down, right? But they're not trying to push you down. They're not trying at all. Inside, they want you to be successful, but their fear is stopping you. So what can you do? How can you do, use a block? Let me give you a very exact example. So your sister, you're at a family outing, at a family gathering, and your sister has baked this very special thing that you love. Let's call it cheesecake. <laughs> you have this cheesecake, and she says, I put all my love into this for you. I was thinking about making or buying ice cream, and I thought, no, she doesn't like ice cream. I want to show her love. I'm going to make you a cheesecake. So I made you this special. It took me 12 hours to make this cheesecake. And here's a slice just for you. Now your sister knows what you're doing. And she doesn't want to negatively hurt you. She loves you. But for some reason, she feels compelled to show that love with cheesecake. So here's what you do. Here's your deflect. Here's your block. Can I use you, Cindy? Cindy, thank you so much. You do not understand how much that meant to me, that you took all that time, all that energy, and you built this beautiful creation for me. But you may not realize this, I'm on a sugar fast, and it's so important to me that I succeed, and I have three weeks left. So as much as I appreciate this cheesecake, uh, and I just think you are fantastic. Can you help me by just making that cheesecake, cheesecake disappear? Thank you. Now you've empowered her to help you. It's so much harder for us to do that though, isn't it? Because then we're like, oh, and so we're like, oh, thank you, Cindy. You're the best. And then we eat it. And then later we go, I hate myself. I have failed yet again. So it is okay to use your blocks and stop those things from happening. Maybe you need to use a block when it comes to your high blood pressure. Maybe you want to get off of blood pressure medication and you tell your doctor, I am working on a goal to get off of blood pressure medication. And the doctor says, well, that's never going to happen. So let's talk about something else. I know you all have, or not all of you, but some of you have experienced this, where the doctor says, once on it, always on it. That is when you can say, you know what, I'm gonna work on my nutrition, I'm gonna exercise, and in six months, I'm gonna come back and you're gonna draw my blood, or you're gonna take my blood pressure, and then let's have this discussion again. Block the haters, don't listen to them, don't feed into it, block it. That is your fourth one. That is your protector. And the final one is the combos. Everybody loves a good combo, right? Jab, cross, hook! Judy? <laughs> Those combinations are what get the fight done. Those are how you succeed. The jabs are helpful. The blocks are helpful. But when you put it all together into one fantastic thing, you are successful. A combo includes good nutrition, 
whole food nutrition. You don't have to be vegetarian. You don't have to be keto. You don't have to be Atkins. You have to eat real, honest to goodness food. That's good nutrition. Exercise. Exercise is specific movement for a specific purpose. It is not going for a walk to walk your dogs. Yes, that is good for you, but exercise has a very specific outcome. You're working on strength, you're working on cardiovascular stamina, you're improving flexibility. Whatever those things are, that is the exercise I'm talking about and that needs to be an important component of your daily routine. Active living, on the other hand, is exactly what I was saying. It's walking the dog. It's your girlfriend say, hey, I want to go out on a date. Let's go, uh, let's, let's go to Hobo's and have a beer. That's when you say, you know what? Let's pack that beer and go for a hike. Thank you for coming, you guys. That's okay. Thank you for making it. Um, they came, you guys, even though they had something else to be at. So awesome. I love that. That's that C, consistency. Yes? All right. So um, where was I? Oh, so then it's also, uh, get my head back in the game, drinking water, we have to hydrate. We used to say 60, 40, 80 ounces of water, but most recently the research is saying women need 101 ounces of water a day and men need over 120. So if you have been shooting for the 64, great, hit it, and now let's do some more. We just need to just chug all day long. Yes, just like that. <laughs> Stress management is important as well. We need to learn when to say no. I know, the room goes silent. Nobody wants to say no. But as we're going into the holiday season, I just want to encourage you guys, no is not a four-letter word. It's an acceptable word. It is a two-letter word, and it's an empowering word. Uh, can you come to my aunt's, sister's, uncle's, brother-in-law's Christmas party? Sure, no. No, you cannot. You have enough other responsibilities. Can you chair this fundraiser? Well, sure, with the six other things I'm doing. Why not? No, I don't have the time to give it my energy. It's okay to say no. So stress management. Rest. Oh, I can't say enough about this one. I don't just mean sleep. I mean rest. For me, rest is sitting on the boat, hearing water laughing against it, watching the birds, and feeling a breeze on my face. I don't need to sleep. I get more rest from that than putting my head on a pillow. So, resting is also just taking down time to be in the moment. Now, those are your five moves to be successful. You're going to get your fighting stance, build that strong base. You're going to jab, you're gonna test the water, you're gonna try new things, you're not gonna let fear rule you. You're gonna cross punch, power, strong consistency over and over and over again, doing the work, putting in the time. You're gonna block all the well-meaning haters, all the difficult situations that get in your way. And finally, you're gonna mix it all together and live a healthier life to get the outcome that you're after. That is how you're gonna be successful. It's been said that we are born, we live, we die. I'd like to expand on that. We are born, yes. We have no choice how we're born. We're just born. It happens, no control. Death, we're all gonna do it. Every single one of us, one way or another. We have some effect on it, but irregardless, regardless, it's gonna happen. Ah, I'm working on that one. It's been a word in my language my whole life, and now I realize it's not a word. Regardless. We can control somewhat, but not completely, the death, yes? What we can control are the six letters in the middle. W-E-L-I-B-E, -E. we live. You have the control over those six letters. This is your life, how do you choose to live it? Don't be swayed by the world around you, how do you choose to live it? It is yours to live, not theirs. Live it how you want to live it. I would encourage you to step into that ring, to stand tall, to get your fighting stance on, and to plow forward. In doing so, not only will you change your life, but you will change others around you. Because others around you see what you're doing. They may be acting like haters now, but one day they're gonna say, what did you do? I'd like to try that. 
and you're inspiring them to change. You're inspiring them to improve. You will be the inspiration in doing so. On the table in front of you are a whole bunch of little boxing gloves. This is to remind you of our conversation today. And what I want you to do is pick up your boxing glove. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to think about that thing you're afraid of that you haven't done. It doesn't have to be health. It doesn't have to be fitness. It could be financial. It could be about a job. It could be about becoming uh, more, act more active in your community. Whatever that is, I want you to think about that goal. And then I want you to open your eyes and cast it onto that glove. So that every time you look at that glove, you see the potential of what you are becoming. You see what you are going to achieve. It becomes a visual stimulus for change in your life. Put it on your key ring, hang it from your rear view mirror, hang it from your refrigerator, put it in your bathroom, wherever you're gonna see it so that you can consistently be reminded of that change that you're making in your life for the better.